The Origin of Humanity. Xie Feng. Translated by Tsong Long. Where do human beings come from? There have been some sayings. Ango created the heaven and earth. Niwa created men using clay. In Chinese mythology, Pangu and Niwa are the god and goddess who created the world. Prometheus made men out of mud and stole fire from heaven for humans. Ram-headed god Knum molded men from clay at a potter's wheel. And goddess Hecate breathed life into the new body, and they two together made new lives. God created man using clay according his own image. Celestials came to the earth. Human beings were created by aliens. Humans were evolved gradually from single-cell organisms. However, the most influential sayings are evolutionism and the story of how God created man in Bible. The Awkwardness of Evolutionism Xie Feng, translated by Tsong Long, The Awkwardness of Evolutionism According to the theory of evolution, humans were evolved from apes, and apes could possibly be evolved from rabbits and rabbis from worms. Worms could be evolved from microbes, microbes from single-cell organisms, which could possibly come into being by accidents in the sea, the vast, organic, and fertile soup. Evolution is the result of inheritance, mutation, and natural selection. Evolution is a slow and gradual process. Evolution is in accordance with the natural selection, the law of jungle and survival of the fittest. But is this really the truth? The process of one organism evolves to another organism is a very long process. A rabbit can evolve to a monkey overnight. One seed, from germination, growth, flowering, fruiting to decline, there is a process. Any step of process could not be skipped. If we take picture of the seed every day, we will be able to see the slow and gradual process of its change. Evolutionism firmly believes that humans are evolved from apes. There must be a slowly changing process and some intermediates, that is to say, from an ape to a man, it should at least have some steps of intermediates, it is impossible that an ape will leap to a man. So where are those intermediates? What are they? In 1924, scientists found fossils which they called Australopithecus africanus, southern ape of Africa, near the famous diamond town, Kimberley, South Africa. Later, they found more Australopithecus boise. It is also called Eastern African, Australopithecus afrensis, Australopithecus garhai, etc. Particularly, they think Java man was the intermediate between ape and human. Based on these facts, evolutionists self-deceivingly claimed that they had made great achievements. But please don't be too satisfied. Self-entertaining will not bring joys to others. According to the calculation based on molecular biology, it was between 4 and 5 million years ago when men and apes separated. So from 4 million years ago till the time of earliest historical records, how human beings evolved. Were there no any processes or intermediates? If not, does that mean evolution stopped at the stage? If yes, please show the evidence. Again, I want to ask evolutionists, which animal were apes evolved from? Can you please give us evidences too? How can you prove that the 4 million years old fossils you found are the ancestors of humanity? Just because their shapes look alike? Can you prove that chicken is the ancestor of swan because you found a few chicken bones? At the end of the 20th century, a large number of fossils were discovered in Chungjiang County, Yunnan Province, China. The research showed that today's diverse animals were actually appearing suddenly on the earth, and it also proved the correctness of theory of Cambrian explosion, which happened 530 million years ago. The theory of Cambrian explosion says that over 90% of animal species were appearing suddenly in a moment, which is less than 1% time of the earth developing history. It is like mushrooms growing everywhere along ditches and grasslands after an overnight drizzle, which is by no means a slow and gradual process, so do evolutionists still have any far-fetched explanations on this? Let me ask more. The obtuse angle of three congruent ROM at the bottom of a beehive is 109 degrees 28 minutes, and the acute angle is 70 degrees 32 minutes, which is the most economic and reasonable structure. So is this wisdom also from evolution? Rooster crowing, chick breaking its egg shell, bird migrating, spider webbing, eel discharging, chameleons changing skin color, weaver bird nestling, silkworm making cocoon, snail making shell, hound tracking, pigeon going home, etc. 
Do all these wisdom of animals and insects come from evolution? Let's make the conclusion by quoting the wisdom of Darwin, the originator of the theory of evolution. If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous, successive, slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. The birth of life Echanuan has proved evolution theory has absolutely broken down. Evolutionism cannot prove the origin of humanity. Human beings were not evolved from animals at all. So, what about the sayings in Bible? Please read The Origin of Humanity too. The Awkwardness of Bible. Xiefeng, translated by Tsong Long. There were records about the origin of humanity in the Genesis of Bible. 26 And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27 So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 128 And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. 29 And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. 30 And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. 31 And God saw every thing that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Point seven, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. 2.18 And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. 2.21 And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 2.22 And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. 20 And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. So is this how humans come into being? Let's still have a look of what Bible says. For colon one and Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. For colon two, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. For colon three, and in process of time it came to pass, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. For colon four and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. For colon five, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. For colon six, and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? For colon seven, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, Sin leath at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. For Colin ate, and Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. For Colin nine, and the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? For ten, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood creeth unto me from the ground. For eleven, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. For twelve, when thou tilliest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. For thirteen, and Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. For fourteen, behold, Thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass, that every one that findeth me shall slay me. For fifteen and the Lord said unto him, Therefore whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. 
And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. For sixteen and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. So, we have a question on the above records. Adam and Eve are the ancestors of humans. Cain and Abel are the first two sons of Adam and Eve. At that time, there should not be anybody else exist on the earth except Adam's family. So why Cain was worrying everyone that findeth me shall slay me? Who were going to find him? If what Bible recorded is true, there must be some other men exist except Adam's family, and they must had long existed before Adam's family. Otherwise, Cain would not say, Every one that findeth me shall slay me. So if there lived other humans, and they were not descendants of Adam and Eve, back then, Adam and Eve only had two sons, and Abel was killed by Cain. We can say Adam and Eve are not the ancestors of all human beings, and what Bible recorded is only the story of origin of Israelite people. Bible only recorded the origin of the Middle East people, and not that of all human beings. So where do human beings come from? Please read The Origin of Humanity 3. The Prelude, Tsiefing, translated by Tsong Long. We have known how the universe and the greatest creator came into being. I have proven the existence of the greatest creator in the chapters of The Greatest Creator, using 40 natural phenomena and 8 logical reasonings. But what did the greatest creator do after his birth? Uji generates Taiji. Taiji generates two complementary forces. These two forces are unity of opposites. That is to say, after Taiji, the creator, was born, division of energy started to happen within Wuji. Where the energy is low, it comes into forms, therefore, the celestial bodies of universe began to emerge one by one. Space started to expand infinitely. Where the energy is high, things exist with no form, just like the black holes in the universe, they are invisible. When some celestial bodies first appeared, their movement were random and disordered. There were no solar system, Milky Way system, nor low rotary galaxy system and rotary river galaxy system. To ensure everything run in order, the greatest creator needs someone to take care of the universe. It is like a person borrowed a large sum of money from bank in order to establish a big business. He need to recruit some people to take the responsibilities of purchasing, manufacturing, production, internal management, and sales, etc. Same, the greatest creator also needs someone to help him finish the project of creating the universe. Then how did he manage the universe? He started to make gods. What is God? God is the helper of the greatest creator. Then how did the greatest creator make God? We know that the greatest creator is the energy core and nerve center of the universe. He used his almighty consciousness generating powerful energy to squeeze some regional energy, which then became many independent energy groups. The center of these groups formed a special structure. After the structure was strengthened with the power of the energy, a consciousness was born. These consciousness entities are gods. The process is similar as making bricks and kills. We use loosened soil, added with appropriate chemicals, put them into kills to calcine. After this process, the loosened soil become hard bricks. If we put the soil and chemicals in a vessel that can't be destroyed by any powerful energy, and then calcine them using very high energy, the soil mixed with chemicals will form a special structure and will further produce consciousness. A new life will be born. How many gods has the greatest creator made? Many. Each god has his own independent consciousness, but their energy level is far lower than that of the greatest creator. Therefore, gods have to obey the greatest creator. What is the energy level of a god? It depends on the size of the energy ball used to create that particular god. Some gods have very high energy, some have very small energy. However, even the god with the smallest energy is more powerful than any one of the visible celestial bodies. The energy of sun is very high, but the total energy of the sun is less than that of the least powerful god. The black holes, all over the universe we know, are actually gods. When the greatest creator finished making gods, he ordered them to form universes, for example, the universe where the earth lives is in charge by many gods, black holes. Among them, the two biggest gods are Jesus and Satan. That is to say, earth universe are managed by Jesus and Satan. Earth universe includes 3,000 rotary river systems, 9 million Milky Way systems, 27 billions of solar system. Jesus and Satan are two opposite gods, but they are unity. 
Jesus stands for the sincere, kind, and beautiful. Satan stands for the false, evil, and ugly. Jesus stands for light. Satan stands for dark. Jesus stands for the ordinary. Satan stands for the extraordinary. Jesus stands for the weak. Satan stands for the strong. When gods were created, the universe was still not vibrant enough. It was quiet and deserted, and gods felt bored and lonely. Therefore, they asked the greatest creator to create more lives to make the universe noisy and vital. He agreed and then created many new lives using smaller energy balls. These new lives are the angels which are so-called in Judaism, Christianity, Catholicism, and Islam. Angels are the lives whose energy level is lower than God's, and they are managed and dominated by God. They are also the messengers and helpers of God. They assist gods to manage everything in their own universe. Angels have their own characters. They can move freely in any time and space. The appearance of angels made the universe very lively and vibrant. The universe can be described as orioles sing and swallows dart, bustling with noise and excitement. But the problem after that is because Jesus and Satan stand for two opposite sides. They are evenly matched but have contrasting views which eventually led angels divide into two parties. One follows the viewpoint of Jesus, the other follows Satan. The former is just the Buddha, we always know from Buddhism. The latter is the celestial described in Chinese Taoism. Buddha is angle. In Chinese word, Buddha is fu, fu stands for not, dan stands for human. So Buddha means a human who is not human. They actually have supernatural power and are able to appear in any forms. They can create life, move mountains, and turn over the sea. They can change the visible to invisible, the invisible to visible. They can survive in a vacuum and move freely in many spaces without the constraints of time. The headquarter of Buddha is what we call paradise, which is also the Elysium I mentioned in 36 dimensional spaces. Celestial is also angel. From the structure of Chinese word Shan, we can reason that they are a group of human who like to travel around enjoy nature, and love fun. They have the same level of power and ability as what Buddha have, however. Although Buddha look peaceful, they are arrogant and always want to excel over others while celestials are gentle, pure, fun-loving, behaving the same as what they look like. To know more about how human beings were created, please read The Origin of Humanity 4. Celestials Creating Human Xiefeng Translated by Tsong Long In order to demonstrate its power, under the permission of the greatest creator, 4.5 billion years ago, Jesus led hundreds of million celestials start the project of creating solar system. They first created the earth, then the sun and other planets in the solar system. They made very careful calculation and design on the size, position, rotary speed of the sun and the earth. After that, Jesus sent near 100 million celestials come to the earth with the identity of intelligent beings. They started large scale of creation on the earth. The water, air, and most green vegetation and grazing animals are the creations of those celestials. Microbes were self-created as the result of water and photosynthesis. This process, from beginning to the end, lasted for nearly 2.3 billion years. Before animals were created, there was no moon. When the first group of animals were created, celestials found that if they left Earth, animals could not survive without ebb and flow, wind, cloud, rain, and snow. Therefore, they built two big smelters at places not far from where is now Cairo, Egypt, and the Atlantis. It is now located at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and made many airships, UFO, using the special smelted metals and sent the animals they created to everywhere on the earth. At the meantime, they used these airships to transport smelted metals to a space station. They then created a huge hollow ball with a rough surface, silver, and reflecting. This huge ball is the moon we refer to today. One billion years ago, the night on the Earth was very bright. Later, because the dust from universe continuously dropped on the moon, it was no longer as bright as before. The UFOs we occasionally saw are not from outer space, they are from the center of the moon, which is a huge warehouse. It stores many tools which had been used by celestials. UFO is also one of the tools. There is a door on the moon. It can be opened at any time. There is a giant palace under the mysterious Bermuda Triangle that is the temporary lodge for the visiting celestials. Celestials can remotely control UFOs in the warehouse of the moon to monitor the Earth according to their needs. 
The Earth of 200 millions years ago was very beautiful and prosperous. The place where Sahara Desert currently is located had many green mountains and a dense growth of green trees. Birds were twittering, flowers were blossoming. It was once the most beautiful places for green plants and animals. Celestials used to love singing, dancing, and playing on the Earth, and they were so enjoying it and almost forgot their home. Unfortunately, the happy scene didn't last long. The happiness of celestials provoked the anger of Satan. In order to show that he had superior power, he sent another group of Buddhas to the earth 250 million years ago and started to create flies, mosquitoes, bugs, rats, scorpions, centipedes, snakes, and predators in large scale to let these animals fight with the creations of celestials. Moreover, they even appeared in the form of dinosaur, destroyed the plants and animals all over the world out of jealousy. This inharmonious situation made the greatest creator very sad. At about 130 million years ago, he destroyed all dinosaurs by applying one kind of plague and put all their souls in the prison of the cathode black hole. Dot. Unfortunately, there were a pair of smart dinosaurs hid under the bottom of East China Sea and were able to survive. They kept dormant underwater for nearly 100 million years. In about 1,600,000 years ago, in order not to let the earth become idle, the greatest creator designed a life structure himself, which is the draft version of current humans. He then gave the design paper to Jesus and let him to implement. The helpers of Jesus, celestials, started to make new lives according to this design. In order to receive the energy of the greatest creator sending from the universe, also to accumulate energy for creating this special new life and speed up the process, they built many laboratories in the place where now is Egypt. These laboratories are exactly the well-known pyramids of Egypt. Because of the lack of experience and some steps were missed, the first lives they made were monkeys, and then after were apes, of course, this wouldn't please the greatest creator. So they continued testing and making. The first group of human they successfully made are the black men in Africa, and the second group are native Indians in America. The third are the white men in Europe, Egypt, and North Africa. When they finished producing three groups of human, they started to evacuate, and in order to avoid Satan creating difficulties again, they destroyed everything around the pyramids before they left, which is also why Sahara is a desert today. But, where do most people in Middle East come from except Egyptian? They are the descendants of Adam, and Eve is what says in Bible, they were created by another god. This god knew that his rival started to create humans on earth. He created a secret garden of Eden, in about 7,000 years ago at Jerusalem, and made Adam and Eve, after they were created, he destroyed the Eden to avoid the attention of his rival. This is why Cain was afraid that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Who was he afraid of? The humans created by another god. This is why his god still protected him, even Cain killed his brother. Whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. So today's conflicts between Israelite and Palestinian are actually the conflicts between brothers and our family affairs. And let's now talk about East Asian and Southeast Asian. They were not created by any god at all. They were the embodiments of dinosaur. At about 7,500 years ago, when the pair of dinosaur knew that celestials created human on the earth, they sneaked from the sea and changed into human form, started to propagate along the Yellow River, and the descendants gradually spread all over Asia. One of the groups went upwards, crossed the Pamirs to India. They want to mingle with the descendants of Adam and Eve to avoid the punishment of the greatest creator again. This is why Chinese people always say, China is the hometown of dragon, and Chinese are the descendants of dragon. This is also why Buddhism originated from India, but blossomed in East Asia and Southeast Asia. Why it didn't become popular in India? The ancestors of Sakyamuni you know, went to India from Yellow River. When they arrived at India, they found that their consciousness was not compatible with that of the descendants of Adam and Eve and had to find new home. Because in their subconsciousness, there's a very deep call that is to go home. Which home? The Elysium, before they came to Earth. Sakyamuni found he came from Elysium after his enlightenment. Although he had a blurry picture of his home, he still remembered something. Once this subconsciousness was awakened, he decided to be engaged in the cause of preaching to other descendants and shifted the focus to the east led by of his subconsciousness. That's also why Bodhidharma came to China to preach Buddhism. 
Because Indian people were designed by a different creator, they were reluctant to accept the theory of Buddhism because of the absence of the memory in their subconsciousness. That's also why although Buddhists had made great efforts, it still failed in India. However, in East and Southeast Asia, people had the instinct sense of the existence of other dimensional spaces, it is quite easy for them to resonate with the theory of Buddhism. Once they accept it, it is rooted and lingers in their mind. The state, vague and intangible, which Taoism pursues and the Elysium world Buddhism pursues are something rooted in the subconsciousness of the yellow race. They feel and believe the existence of the space that is hard to explain. In fact, the space where the Elo race yearning for is the place where the dinosaur had lived in 10,000-year world and Elysium world. Therefore, even after 10 million years, the message is still embedded in the genetic structure of the yellow men. East and Southeast Asian tend to cultivate Buddha and celestial. It is driven by their inner voice. Although some people accept the theory of Bible, it is not an acceptance out of their heart, but a rational act. People of other races are very easy to believe in God but quite reluctant to accept Buddhism and Taoism. Some people might believe in Buddhism and Taoism, but it is just a blind pursuit of mysterious phenomena. They are impossible to reach the state of resonance of soul. Then, what is the truth of the Great Flood in Noah's time? First, I want to explain something. Before the Great Flood, human beings had been through extinction already. The humans created 16 million years ago were very strong and tall. They were cruel and very aggressive. They maltreated animals and were very greedy. They didn't even respect the greatest creator, not to mention gods and Buddhas. The city of Maya, ancient Egypt, and Atlantis were their activity centers. They had the power of God, Buddha, and celestial but were lack of their virtue. They always went to 10,000-year world and Elysium world to make troubles and did whatever they wanted to do, which had become a big threat to the order of the universe. Finally, the greatest creator had to order some gods destroy the city of Maya, ancient Egypt, and Atlantis in one night. Only left some weak and less intelligent humans on the earth to continue the propagation of the human species. In order to comfort these men, the greatest creator created another planet which is even more beautiful, 960 light years from the earth, it is the thousand-year world. The greatest creator told these people, if they behave well and don't make trouble, they would be able to go to thousand-year world to enjoy happier life after death. However, these humans started to forget the warning when the population grew to large numbers and its civilization advanced. They began to ignore the greatest creator and thought he was nothing special. At about 4,700 years ago, humans on the earth thought that they were able to manage the earth themselves without the help of the greatest creator and gods. They ignored their teachings and insisted their own will. Their pursuit of physical and material comfort far exceeded the pursuit of spiritual growth, which had caused moral degeneracy and the advancement of brute. It strongly destroyed the harmonious atmosphere of the earth. Moreover, the two gods managing the earth had different ethics, thus fought with each other, which made the greatest creator so angry that he turned around the earth's dip angle. Huge storms poured down. It lasted for forty days and nights, and drowned most humans and animals, the evil act of humans were then curbed. But after the Great Flood, Noah's family were not the only men survived. There were survivors all over the world. This can be verified in many Chinese historical records. The story of Dayu flood control is a hard fact. There is also detailed narration in the legends of the Indian tribe Mandan, North Dakota, America. This is the outline of the origin of human beings.